This is David. This is Owen. They're both navigating senior year in Long Island Public High Schools. Everybody in the school knows me, and there's a lot of kids in the school that look up to me. Sometimes I question why, but you know. <laughs> I'm very outgoing, and so like it's easy for me to make friends. I'm like friends with like everybody, pretty much, in my grade. David and Owen have many similarities. My grades are high. I'm vice president of my school. I'm captain of the track team. Track meets every day to like four-ish, and right after that, I have my extracurriculars. My average, it's really pretty good. All right, I was like phenomenal, but. I was raised by my mom. My brother, my sister, and I live with my mom. My family, we're not the wealthiest, you know, and so the extra money I get, I help them play like bills and stuff. My mom, she had a lot of things already that she pays for it. So I got my job so I can help pay for stuff during school. Currently I'm working at Carvel. I work at Carvel. David and Owen may have many similarities, but they go to very different schools. In other schools, they have more of opportunity that we don't have here. We don't have the best tech books here. We don't really have any AP classes here. We don't have as many teachers. I know that it's more out there. This is a great school. I think that everyone should have the opportunity to go into schools like this. That's what I think. As a society, a society which has a uh, devotion to individuality, we have a hard time seeing structures. Either we don't see them, or when we do see them, they look like they're completely natural and inevitable. Long Island is a suburban region that's incredibly fragmented, which means fragmented tax base, fragmented job centers, and fragmented school system. When you have this fragmentation in America, you're almost always likely to have racial and economic segregation. You have these systems where, on one hand, you have a school system that's apparently working okay, and right next to them they have a school system that's not working. It creates a lot of internal tension, and internal tension affects everyone. I just got to make sure that everything for my college stuff was done. My guidance counselor, she's like, she's head of student government, she's head of National Honor Society, she's like, she's all over the place. So when she's available, I can ask her for help. But most of stuff I had to do by myself. My 
my mom works all day, so I can't really ask her to really help me. My older sister, she's going to a trade school, so when she's home, I'm at school. When I'm home, she's at school. Um, I don't think I get any help from my little sister. <laughs> so today at 12 and 12.30, you got yep. two students. Okay, Mr. Ward. Mr. Ward, Mr. Ward, Mr. Ward. <laughs> She said 20 minutes. I'll be back. She's not available. She's not available. I used to live in Queens, Jamaica, Queens. Not the best neighborhood. So my mom uh, did a lot of research because she wanted me to go to a good school. And so when my mom told me I was going to uh, Rockwell Center, I was nervous because I was like, all right, it's not gonna be fun. Since there's like not that many black kids in the school, I was just like, okay, it's not gonna be the best year. Maybe people will treat me different. Oh yeah, like, I never finished trying what I was scholarship thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's great. That's the only one you're doing. No, I actually applied to like eight other ones. For Owen, the first time I saw him, I recognized him as being new um, because I knew, I knew, I at least recognized most of the, the black kids. And I didn't, he didn't, and it, when he first got here, he wasn't a part of that crowd right away. So I guess initially there was, yeah, there was a little bit of estrangement there. But then once I was in class with him, I, I got a better picture of who he was, so. Well, that part isn't good. Now, I'm very good friends with him. I give him a ride to school every day. There's plenty of nights where we'll be working on some kind of paper or project together, and uh, I, I'm able to help him with uh, pro work, a homework occasionally, and he helps me. You know, we sort of balance each other out, I guess. Oh, that's the book you were talking about. Remember when book, I told you? Uh, you were talking like, about the movie. I was like, like the life of pie. The life of pie. Like, no, no, it's just the movie pie. When I got to the school, I came in towards the middle of the year, like two weeks before midterms. They would help me out in a few subjects that I needed help in, and like, you know, like certain kids, like the certain kids are just nice. I didn't think like, I didn't expect that to happen. where we isolate students into rich school districts and poor school districts, where you have tremendous disparity in terms of resources. All administrators stand in the hallway every period to get them to move along and to be where they need to be because that's what they need, that interaction. I mean, I will point out, the fact that we do have uh, metal detectors here in our school because it is a reality, and if we're going to keep our students safe, then we need to use every technology that we can to make sure that students are safe. In a school like, like Wine Dance, we already know that there are so many challenges that our students come with um, throughout from the community, but we don't have the resource, the financial resources, to give the students what they need. More teachers, more school psychologists, and uh, more social workers. Our school district uh, doesn't have a lot of businesses, so the money uh, to, f to fund these programs, and it does cause a lot of money to fund these programs, have to come directly from the community, meaning that if any program that we want to implement, we have to tax the community to, to do it. And this, this community has no businesses to help support that taxing. We always have to worry about our budget, just like everyone else, but we're lucky enough to have a community that really is uh, very supportive in terms of funding of education. In terms of Long Island, Rockville Center would be in the middle of the pack in terms of resources. You have to have resources. If you have class sizes of 45, if you can't afford to have support classes, you're not going to be able to serve your students well. I mean, that's a given. You know, 
is that the economy has been really bad. We've had a lot of losses on Wall Street. So yesterday, um, Governor Patterson had to introduce a lot of cuts in the budget. Some of them sound very strange. Here's a killer. Roosevelt School District, supposed to get $12 million, cut back to six. So you know, oh, yeah. so, so you know the million and a half that we needed, we ain't getting it. We will not be getting it. Okay, so, so we'll be very fortunate to keep all of our teachers next year. And, and one of the last ones hired, wow. you know, I'm a little worried. So that means I really got to look out like that. Yeah, we do. It doesn't even matter how much work Yeah, they do. Now, wait, wait, wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There are a couple of other things, okay? State oh. University of New York. The tuition's going to go up another $620 a year. What? We can't afford it as it is. I can't make out anybody. If everybody, if everybody's losing their jobs, how do they expect you to? Why are they increasing everything? Exactly. Which is going to put us back into a depression. Why do you think he's making all these drastic cuts? This is or depressing. these drastic additions? Is it trying to help us or hurt us? Well, what do you think? I think it's trying to hurt us. I mean, I his, his intentions is to help us, but we don't in our don't point of view, it's, exactly. it's, it's hurting. It it's We're going to do it with a show of hands. Yeah, I am an independent thinker. I know my own mind. Yeah. yeah. Independent thinker, I know my own mind. Uh, I can remember pieces of music easily. Uh, okay. I enjoy log logic problems, puzzles. Oh, I hate them. Huh? I always say right in the middle. Race, show. Race, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. The philosophy of the school is to really play to the multiple intelligences of students. Southside and the IB program really have the commitment to diversity and to and to all students. Um, generally associated, maybe? We learn to sort of question what we learn. It's not necessarily. Because we're not interested. When you have cultural diversity in the class, it adds a dimension of understanding for every child in the class. And amazing things start to happen. All right, hit finish. This is your class profile. The question is, does this shape who you are? Do you tend to be these things? Not necessarily. Just because I scored higher on linguistics than mathematics doesn't mean I would want to pursue that in college and beyond. Okay. There's a difference between liking something and being good at it. Exactly. That's, that's when, I look, when, I, when I'm going to look for a job, I'm not going to look for what's interesting and what's fun. I'm just going to look for the money. That's all I care about. <laughs> no, I'm actually serious, though. <laughs> You're placing money higher up. Okay, Pe people have different motivators. Is money a motivator? For some people, it is. For some, it is simply a satisfier. Most people don't do that. You all read it. Stop. You all just read Death of a Salesman. Yeah. In the last scene of Death of a Salesman at the rake wheel, Biff says, "No, the only way we're going to be happy out there is if I go out there, work with my hands." work with my hands, I don't care what the, it's better off, I don't care how much money I make as long as I'm happy doing the job. What, what's Biff's point? Anybody can do anything, all right? You really can. Y'all ready? <laughs> there we go. He did it. Why are you not in class? I've been living in Wyandanche all my life. And my family's been here for over 42 years, so I really haven't really been anywhere else. Why don't we start over here and we'll kind of wrap around for those that just came in. Hi. Hello. My name is David. What up, Dave? David. <laughs> and I'm basically here to aid anybody that might need my help in whatever it might be as far as any problems that you might have. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. I'm very passionate when it comes to the kids in my school. I mean, it's certain. I see certain things I don't like, and I do think that certain things need to change. 
I think that was also the main reason why the teachers pushed me. It was more of the teachers pushing me to push other people. Jackie Garcia. Hey, Jackie. Yeah. Jackie. My goal was to have one of the largest graduating classes, not just for me to graduate, but was to have one of the largest graduating classes in Wine Dance. And David Ward. Yeah. Woo! All right. Oh, nine. That's right. That's right. But I try to look at it from the other point of view. If I wasn't, okay, a straight A student or a straight B student, and I was filling a lot of my classes, what would bring me to school? Wait, I'm sweating. This side squish. It's certain things that kids are interested in, and it's certain things they want to go to school for, like sports and things they do after school. And unfortunately, a lot of that stuff we're starting to lose here because of money. Splat! Hey! Splat! Yeah! 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 themselves because it may some things may come out in the wash as we talk through each role okay um let's talk alan sure. can somebody articulate who alan is like how do you describe him the role overwhelming anxious overwhelmed like it feels really unprepared for his test and he goes to take the test and all these like crazy things. i was a freshman i didn't have the best grades because uh, i don't know i don't know what i was thinking like I, I was just there i was just having fun constantly and i just like forget school whatever school who needs it Okay, teacher. Teacher, can somebody I think uh, Mr. articulate the teacher? Yeah, right? <laughs> Kevin, shh. Articulate um, him. Well, he's, he's basically, he's really helpful and friendly to everyone but Alan. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. to Alan, Alan he's, right. he doesn't he's understand why Alan doesn't teacher. know anything. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sophomore year, many teachers set goals for me, okay. which I tried to achieve. And then go back yeah. and... I'm a very competitive kid. And like, I think I'm pretty smart, but there's a bunch of other smarter kids in, our, in my grade. And so it makes me want to try harder and study more and do better on my test. Okay, now tell me about <laughs> Evan, because this is funny. Who Evan? Oh, he was the first starter. What? what? I need my watch number. Yeah, who's Evan? He's like the football player, and he comes into class yeah, like, okay. like oh, yeah. 20 minutes late, and there's like 10 minutes left on the test, and he has no time. And he gets right. like what he wants from the teacher without oh, yeah. having to try and the good grade. Oh, so, 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 he's, yeah. so he is athletic. He's also um, a good student. He's an all around perfect kid who is great. So, <laughs> <That's me. laughs> yeah, he is. My grades went up significantly. I mean, usually as the years go on, it gets harder. But for me, as the years went on, like my average went higher because I started trying more. I had to do it for myself because this is the rest of my life. When I was applying to colleges, I only applied to four. You know, certain kids who apply to 16 different colleges. I think like 15 kids go to Ivy League schools. Like I don't know, like seven, six or seven are going to Cornell. I know one is going to Princeton. I know a lot of the kids in my class are going to St. Joseph's. Um, um, I think two kids are going to Hofstra. Um, a lot of them are going to the military. My friend Kevin Bonilla, he's going to Howard. So right now that's like the big talk of the school is him going to Howard. So. I can't go on the conference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So you the four top schools that I wanted to apply to was Adelphi, Delphi, Mercy, and Pace. There's a couple of scholarships. I want you to start thinking of GPA. Do you and your mom belong to Teachers Credit Union? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, they have a scholarship as well. So go online and uh, then you have a scholarship process. I believe it's a thousand dollars. Okay. Okay, apply. Okay. Okay. Now where's our list? That is our master list. Okay. It is complete. Okay, so let me see the application. You completed good. Good. The college applications this year were crazy for me. I was nervous. I would have had less choices because of the money factor. And so I applied to Delphine Hofstra and Fordham. Got the essay just updated. But when I had my meeting with guidance, I realized that she told me, you know, I had 93 overall average. And so she made that aware of me. Like, if you get into a great school, somehow, some way, the government or like even that school will make sure you go to that school. And like that makes me happy. It gives kids more opportunities. And you need to fill that part out, the top portion out. That's the fee waiver. What is our safe school? Yes, we go back to that question. <laughs> And if you don't have one, you need to come up with one. Worst case scenario, Pace wasn't working out, Mercy wasn't working out, Adelphi didn't work out for some reason. What's your backup plan? What's your safe school? To start off at one of the community colleges. Okay, which one and why? Well, for me, it would be Suffolk because I know they have a good track team. Okay. And my cousin goes there, so. Okay, so I want you to go online and complete the Suffolk application. Okay. Okay. Yeah, everything is great. Yeah, so are you, right? You too? And why you buddies? And why you buddies? Yeah, I'm very excited. Lucky. I fell in. I'm going to be staying home and commuting. Four of the kids got into NYU and are going and are dorming, but like, I'm the only one commuting. Kids are like, oh, how could you do that? It's not going to be fun. I'm like, well, it will for me because NYU is still a great school, so. I seen you. <laughs> I'm preparing to go to Mercy College for school for psychology and business. Psychology as a major and business as a minor. It was, it's not really a big college, but it's big enough for me. It's not small to where it would seem like I'm still in high school. They have programs that would push me to get the work done that I need to get done. In a school like, like Wine Dance, our focus is on those students who are not performing at the level. But what do you do for the students that need enrichment? That's, that's the key part. It would be about one and a half. We do need to find more enrichment for, for students like a David Ward. If we're ever going to really see the real benefits of integration, um, we have to be willing not only to integrate at the school level, but also at the classroom level as well. At Southside, we have only one course of study, which is a high-level curriculum for all students. Okay, so but you're right, it's all over the place. No, the dramatic place. Irony, where does the dramatic irony come in in street? When we detract, the curve on all of our scores are very, very strong. Even as the test scores of our minority students and students from low SES households has increased, so have our scores for everyone else. This has really been a tide that has lifted all boats. Thank God, like, it wasn't about slots and stuff. Had it worked in slots, I probably wouldn't have been in most of my IB classes, and I wouldn't have been able to have the opportunity of getting the IB diploma. And I'm off to NYU, you know, and, and so, like, it's a chain reaction, really. You know, the typical white kid from Long Island doesn't 
necessarily grow up with this kind of experience. Owen, getting to know him has been very rewarding and I've been blessed going to a school where you have the opportunity to meet a lot of people, the opportunity to try a lot of different things. It really encourages an atmosphere of openness. Yeah, I know there's other stuff at other schools that they have right there that I don't have here, but it's my choice whether to just deal with what I have or to go out and get what I need from somewhere else. So that's what I do. We can't tolerate racially isolated schools. They just don't work. Someone at some point has to have the courage to start working either with district boundaries or other strategies to try to better integrate our schools. Many of the times when we think of fixing racism, we think of fixing the, the individual. And there's a body of research and a body of experience that shows if you can fix things at the institutional structural level, the individual actually changes. You actually change students for life. That's where our power comes from.